it's half term, it's the first weekend of half term and I have so much to do. The next half term is going to be pretty intense. I am an NQT in year 6 and we've got SATs coming up really 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 quickly so I would not really have as much time to film as I would like so I'm going to basically be filming almost every single day. Today's video as you can tell by my title is my 6 tips for trainee teachers. So I was a trainee teacher last year and let me tell you training year is the hardest year without a doubt. I did the PGCE skit route, so I still got my PGCE, but I did it for a school-based route, and it was really tough. So my first tip is it's a hard year, so make time for you. Seriously, make time for you. And I know that's really hard because when you're training, you're not gonna be getting paid. I don't actually know if they still do a bursary. I think I might have been the last year actually to get a small bursary, which is such a ridiculous shame. I don't know why they take the bursary away. It wasn't even a lot of money. It was like £300 a month. I was training with people who would also be working one or two jobs on the side because they had to. And I was lucky enough to be training when I was living at home. I didn't have to have a job, but I basically had that £300 and that went towards my car. Actually, my dad helped me a lot with my car payments, but that went towards, part of it went towards my car, part of it went towards my phone, part of it went towards just necessities so I didn't have a lot of spare money going but you don't actually have to spend a lot of money to make time for yourself so some of the things I'd recommend is giving yourself time to look after yourself doing a face mask actually cleansing your skin making sure that you are getting enough water enough nutrients making sure that you're getting a solid six to seven maybe eight hours of sleep a night that is cool taking care of yourself and if you want to succeed in this year you have to do that because it is an exhausting year and you'll find yourself learning every single day and because of that you'll just feel exhausted and then you're around children as well and you're picking up their germs and you're much more susceptible to getting ill you just need to make time for yourself that's first of all that's self-care and secondly that's doing something that you enjoy doing reading a book going out for a walk with a friend catching up on the phone with a friend watching a movie spending half an hour a day watching youtube videos that you enjoy just do something for you that will make you feel like yourself because it's really easy to get stuck in this headspace of i'm a training teacher and i'm trying to be a teacher and that's all i'm trying to do and no you were someone before you chose to do this and you'll be someone afterwards and it's important to remember that your identity is still there. That's actually one of the things that the head teacher and the deputy head at the school I trained at said to me, like whatever your hobby is, hold on to it. Hold on to it and try to make time for it. Number two, talking about observations now, you will be observed a lot. I had over 50 observations in my whole training year, which is crazy. And it's just a part of the training year and you have to see it as a positive opportunity. Okay, observations are a positive opportunity, but only if you can listen. <laughs> so obviously your mental and other people as well will have to observe you and what you're like and you're gonna be graded against teaching standards and the quicker you learn that observations are there to help you and they're there to make you a better teacher and they're there to improve your practice, the better. And whatever feedback you get, then try and apply that in your next lesson. So for example, if your feedback is that your input was a little bit too long, then just make sure that you're a bit more conscious of the time next time. And also remember that whoever's giving you feedback was in your position five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even 40, 50 years ago, whatever. I mean, maybe not 50 years ago, but quite a few years ago. They were in your shoes. Everyone starts out as a trainee teacher, so just remember that. It's not anything personal, it's just to improve you. My third tip is to remember that you can only get better and that you have totally got this. You have chosen this career because you want to help children, because you're passionate about education, because you love working with children and you love helping the next generation basically and everyone has to start from the bottom and work their way upwards and you can only improve if you listen it's kind of linked to the last point if you listen to the points if you take them on board and if you use other people and resources around you you can only improve you have to be very open-minded you have to be willing to adapt and willing to listen and basically be a sponge like you know how they say children are sponges when it comes to learning and they pick up so much around them you kind of have to train yourself in your training year to be a sponge as well and to pick up as much as you can and not necessarily take all of it forward but take what you like and leave what you don't and keep going. 
My fourth tip is to get yourself into routines as soon as possible. I'm sure by this point you already know that the workload of a teacher is stupendous. It's huge, it never ends. There's a to-do list which just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And even a training teacher, your workload is huge. You have to collect evidence, you have to do, um, do professional objectives, you've got a PGCE to write as well possibly, which is not a small thing, it's a third of a master's. So your workload is gonna be humongous and you're going to feel like you have no time for anything else. And the only way to get around that is to get yourself into really, really good routines. I used to have like Mondays, and Thursdays are like my marking days to catch up on the marking that I need to do. Tuesday is like my evidence day. Wednesday is like my professional objectives day. And then I think Friday I would finish a bit earlier. So that was kind of like my evening to blog or just relax and chill out or watch Netflix or just do something that's not to do with school after school. So the quicker you get into a routine, the better it will be for you. Find something that works for you and stick to it. It's like that saying goes, if you fail to prepare, then you prepare to fail. So the quicker you get into a routine, the easier your workload will be and the less stressed you'll be as well. So it's just a big spiraling effect. My fifth tip is to keep remembering the end goal. I kind of spoke about this already, but keep remembering why you chose to go into this career. Keep remembering the idea that if you succeed and get to the end of this course, you will have your very own classroom in September, you'll be printing out your own labels, creating your own displays, you'll have a whole class of children who will be relying on you as their class teacher to teach them maths and English and PE and history and all these other topics and you know you'll be such an important figure in their lives and if you keep remembering that and you can keep going through all the stress of a training year it becomes so much more easier so yeah remember the end goal do a vision board if you have to i love the idea of something visual i personally started like bullet journaling last year like as and when i could and it kind of became a bit more of a, like an art bullet journal that for me like really helped me to remember like why i went into this um and also speaking to people who have been in the career for a long time and are still loving it so just keep remembering the end goal keep remembering why you want to do this and I hope by now you know that you're not doing it for the money because that's important to bear in mind as well. It's not about the money, it's about the children, it's about their future, it's about you making a difference for the next generation. And my sixth and final tip is all about evidence. Now I don't know how different universities do it, if you're doing the university route, I don't know how different skits do it. Like everyone seems to have a different way of expecting evidence from their trainees but personally I found the evidence part the most difficult. It was the least clear as well because our cohort was the first one to solely have our evidence be uploaded onto one document rather than in folders. So they were showing us these folders from previous years but it wasn't that helpful because they also weren't expecting us to create our own folders like that. We had to do an online system and there wasn't a lot of support available in terms of what they were looking for. What I found like really, really late, maybe in like April, March time was if you just Google high quality teacher training evidence, there comes up with PDFs and PDFs of people who have kindly uploaded their evidence and you get a really, really good idea of what they are looking for and what you need to be showing from your own evidence and what you quickly realize is that so much of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis with your training class it counts as evidence and it's just a case of taking a little photo here or getting a part of a statement from an observation there to build up your portfolio and before you know it you will have an amazing evidence file i'm actually really really proud of my evidence bundle even now to this day i'm really proud of it because when i look back at it it shows me and it reminds me of all the things that i've done and achieved and all the hard work i did to get my teacher training qualification so yeah definitely use the internet that's my biggest tip and you also have to remember that with evidence they want to see first of all what the evidence is so, so for each substandard from the teaching standards i would have like a picture for example of a display i made and then i'd have an evidence description and an evidence impact in my evidence description i would literally describe what the evidence is showing and how it's meeting that substandard and then I would also have an evidence impact statement in which I would talk about, first of all, how doing the display impacted on me as a trainee, 
um, and then how I would carry that forward in my future practice. I think I probably did a bit too much to be honest. It took me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to collate this document. Literally, it took me so long. I lost so much sleep over it and I just wish that I'd use the internet much sooner to understand what I needed to do in order to produce this. Use the internet, use your resources, talk to NQTs, talk to people who have recently qualified because they will more than likely be willing to help you. Um, and yeah, you've totally got this. I hope that video was helpful for any of you guys who are training teachers. And if there's any other questions you have, please leave them down below, I'll be happy to answer them. And if you have any other training or teaching video ideas, please let me know. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe before you leave. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.